right, Joel and Ahmad, thanks very much. With the Dolphins leading 16-0, Bob Costas back along with Will McDonough and O.J. Simpson. We'll give you all the scores and some of the highlights during this halftime segment. The Jets are pounding the Browns. The Bears have the lead over the Packers. We'll tell you all about it when we come back after this message from the National Football League. This is the most important line on the field. It's the goal line. And I've got a play that's going to work magic every time we score. I know you're all counting on me. I know every touchdown makes a difference to each and every one of you. We're all part of this club, and we're all part of this team, and most important, we're all part of this community. I'll show you how it works. This is a magical play. Watch and see. Since I teamed up with United Way, for every touchdown I scored during the season, a special group of corporations have pledged to make contributions to help kids cope with tough problems they face growing up in our society today. So far, that's meant more than $47,000 to United Way. I want to thank the people of Buffalo who give to United Way, and especially the corporate leaders who are members of my Jim Kelly United Way End Zone Club. United Way is a great way to give and a great way to care. United Way brings out the best in all of us. This message furnished by the National Football League. Okay, we're back, and let's take you through all the scores in the game. Some of you are watching Miami with the 16-0 lead over Buffalo at home. They're trying to establish that ground game. That's something Shula has coveted for the past several years to take some of the heat off Dan Marino. Now, here you'll see them stop the Buffalo ground game. On the Buffalo drive, big Larry Kinnebrew denied on the fourth down play. Miami takes over. Then they take off on a long, time-consuming drive. And Sammy Smith, who had 159 yards last week, caps it on the fourth down plunge from inside the one. They kept the ball better than nine minutes and drove 71 yards in 15 plays. Stojanovic has the three field goals, and they lead 16-0. Atlanta is at Detroit. Rodney Pete has thrown two touchdown passes for the Lions, who were upset at home last week by Tampa Bay. Chris Miller has a 10-yard throw to the newly acquired Andre Risen for a Falcon touchdown. Detroit 14, and Atlanta 7 late in the second. Chicago has the lead over Green Bay at Lambeau Field, 17-7. Neil Anderson with a one-yard touchdown run, and Jim Harbaugh just scrambled two yards for a score. The Bears, who were swept by the Packers last year, lead by 10 in this one. The Jets are pounding Cleveland by a score of 24 to 7. Not a happy homecoming for Bud Carson, who used to be the Jets defensive coordinator. It started out well for him, though. Here's Eric Metcalf fielding the game's opening kickoff at the 2. Last week, Metcalf was critical of his own play against Pittsburgh. Well, he looks to atone by speeding 98 yards for the TD, and it looked like the Browns were in business, leading 7 to nothing. But the rookie Blair Thomas and the veteran Freeman McNeil have each had outstanding games out of the backfield for the Jets. And the Jets are able to come right back. Here's McNeil cutting over the middle as he makes a nice catch. Make it Blair Thomas on this one. We'll get to McNeil in a minute. There's Blair Thomas, the rookie out of Penn State. That set up a touchdown run by Freeman McNeil of two yards. Now here's McNeil coming out of the backfield and scampering down the sidelines. He almost gets the touchdown. He's pushed out, but it leads to a Brad Baxter touchdown run of a yard, and the Jets have the lead at 24-7. This one is late in the second quarter. Jim Everett is in the groove. He's thrown three touchdown passes at Tampa Bay. Vinny Testaverde has a 48-yarder to Bruce Hill, but L.A. leads over the Bucks, 28-7. In the game, some of you are watching New England and Indianapolis. Let's take a look at some of the highlights from the Hoosier Dome. The oldest starting quarterback in the league, Steve Grogan, against the number one draft choice, the rookie, Jeff George. Watch this play. The Colts gamble on fourth and goal. Albert Bentley loses the ball, but on a replay review, they said he had possession long enough, broke the plane of the end zone. It was ruled a touchdown and a 7-0 lead for Indianapolis. Then that lead is erased as Hartley Dykes makes the nice catch and some good moves. 27-yard reception for the touchdown from Grogan, and the game is knotted at 7 at halftime. Phoenix trailed Philadelphia at one time, 14-0. Randall Cunningham has a touchdown pass and a one-yard scoring run, but Johnny Johnson, the impressive rookie, went 22 yards on the ground for a TD for Phoenix just before halftime, so they close it up at Veterans Stadium, 14-7. to OJ, your thoughts? Well, uh, you know, uh, I got a couple of calls this week. Uh, for me, that's not surprising when Miami plays Buffalo Bills because it's a big rivalry, but uh, this week the talk was about the committee that Buffalo put together. You know, they put a, a committee between the players. Oh, can't hear me. 
Wait a minute. They're telling us in the control room, tell Juice to put his mic on. But what is that on your tie if it's not a mic? <laughs> Perhaps the guy in the control room should turn the microphone on. In any case, let's just air the dirty laundry right here in front of an astonished public. Juice, I think they've turned it on now. Okay, so what we're talking about is a committee this week. That red flag that Buffalo has some problems up there. Football is not a democracy. You know, you got to have a... Well, well, I have a broken mic if you can read my lips. <laughs> <laughs> Will, just try to use hand gestures in case your mic isn't can working I, either. Can I give them signs? <laughs> Bob, what I saw out of the Miami game is this, you know, the last two years, Miami has been 27th and 28th, respectively, in rushing at the end of the year. This year, they're number one right now for the first time since 1978. Also, the Browns are really struggling. They haven't scored an offensive touchdown yet this year. Bernie Kosar has been sacked eight times in three quarters. I mean, uh, one game and a half. And he's really struggling again. He's 17 for 41 passing so far in six quarters. And now as we attempt to fix O.J.'s microphone problem, buddy, look, if, if we have to, we'll share. We'll just lean across on the next one. We'll send you back to the field for the start of the second half of the game you're watching, and we'll see you later.